I'm Johnny Shannon. I've been with WKY since it's been on the air. WKY TV that then, and everything we did was brand new. Nobody had ever done it, and it was sort of fun. In 1948, they decided to apply for a television station, and they done the paperwork and gave it to our page, who was Billy Nix at the time, and told him to rush it to the post office and send it as quick as he can. And he forgot to. And Saturday morning, he saw it, the car, and he rushed it down to the post office and sent it to uh, Washington. It got there on Monday, uh, which was still in time to get an application. What I hear, they got their application back instantly. It wasn't one of those things that the government does that takes years to get things organized. And we got the thing started as uh, the only station in town. We were, we were going to be allowed two stations here and one at Enid. And that was it for this area. But then, as, of course, as the station they needed got, their tower kept blowing down and they kept moving it to Oklahoma City. And finally, they got an application to build it in Oklahoma City. And for a long time, they had a studio in Enid. Late 1949, they wanted me to go to work full time for the station. And I was just doing commercials at the time. There was television at that time had no news and no sports. And uh, I guess I did the first news story, which was a leopard got loose in, uh, at the uh, our zoo and everybody in town was looking for it. And what happened was they overfed it on dope and they found him dead out there. <laughs> but that was, we had to shoot film. It was, since we belonged to a radio, to a newspaper, everything was four by five speed graphics. So we, we'd shoot dozens of pictures and print them, and paste them up on flip cards, and, we, and finally, we uh, one of our announcers, his name was Harry Harbor, had a movie camera and three uh, film lights, and we station bought it from him, and uh, then the first news story I did on film was a tornado in Arkansas. I don't know if it was Fort Smith or Little Rock, I don't remember. But we made a deal with aircraftsmen to fly us over there and shot 100 feet of film and took it back and processed it in a little hand wind processor. From then on, all of our film processed in Dallas would get it back overnight because Dallas worked at night. We'd ship the stuff down and we get it, go pick it up at the airport the next day. And uh, next, the first feature film we started doing was called Behind Your Telephone. It was sponsored by Southwestern Bell. And uh, well, they just really milked it for all it was worth. <laughs> But it ran for six months. <laughs> Hoyt Andres, our manager, was having lunch with Dean McGee. And Dean McGee wanted to see OU football every week. And he suggested that we broadcast it every week. So next thing I knew, they, I was in California looking for a processor. And I found Houston Fearless who made portable processors. And bought one, and on September of 1954, our first football game was uh, OU, OU versus 
California. There. And went out and filmed all kinds of stuff. It came back and processed it and fought like crazy all night getting it back into shape is to make it a, a, a football game. We learned from that, you know, what we had to have. Nobody else had it either. So we, at that time, we just bought it. Every Sunday, we had to have a coach with Bud Wilkinson and uh, Maury Ferguson uh, talked about football and had narrated the uh, whole football game. We got it. Managed to get it out, processed every night, and back on the air the next day. We carried our cameras. Usually, uh, at that time, we 200 feet was the biggest film we had. And so we had to, two of us. One of us would run it while we was changing film and getting it going, and then switch back and forth. After that, we got b bigger magazines where they would run for 30 minutes. Uh, we we had our own processor, of course, and they took them back in and processed it. And when we, we uh, flew back from out of town games, called our processor and uh, told him we'd, when we'd be there, and flew back. And sometime in the middle of the night, he'd be there processing film. And then we had a a girl editor. That was real funny. She sat there and edited our film for a year, and they flew flew down from New York because they didn't think girls could process could uh, edit film. Our editor's name was Charlene Carruthers, and I don't know where she learned it, but she was really good at it. <laughs> and she had to cut film. Uh, so that it would fit the commercials. So many commercials, and some films, if they, it would run, it would run for an hour of film, and uh, we had to take it out to fit in commercials and live parts, and we, she picked out the bad plays and took them out, and he was very good at it for, 20 years. We did a, a football feature that ran Thursday nights, and we'd have to, we went in on Wednesday, started printing it. We'd take out the scenes that we liked and pasted them up on the wall, and we had film all the way around the room. And then we'd pick out what we wanted and have somebody describe the film. But the way we edited it those days, just cut it and pasted it. When we decided to go color, we would take our film and fly directly to Dallas from where we were playing. And then sometime in the middle of the night, we'd fly back to Oklahoma City and have it all ready for Charlene. And then Sunday afternoon, she'd be editing. Sometimes the air, it would be on the air and she'll still be editing the fourth quarter and they always made it and then on, and then on Sunday afternoon we grabbed a plane and went to who we were going to play the next Saturday to interview their coach and you know you shouldn't do things like that. We decided to shoot football on color film and we had to take it to Dallas to have it processed. We decided to buy our own color processor and went down and I told Mr. Gaylord we needed one. He said, well, buy it. So we put in our own color processor, which meant we didn't have to go to Dallas anymore. We processed it right there at the station. When videotape video came out for television, Mr. Gaylord and Hoyt Andres and P.A. Sugg went to California to look at it. and. Mr. Gaylord thought it was nice, but they said it was, there were over $100,000 a piece. And Mr. Gaylord says, 
how many do we need? And he said, six. And he said, do we get a discount for six? And I said, oh, yes. <laughs> In April of 1954, we got our first live color cameras in. There are numbers three, eight, and 11. We're the first station, non-network station to have one. And we guess we best, better than anybody else in the world had one. We run all of our programs live in color. We had one great engineer named Aaron Britton that could handle those cameras like nobody else. He went to New York to show NBC how to uh, adjust the things so they could be on the air. They used to get in the going open in the morning at five o'clock so that they could be on the air by eight o'clock. And he showed how it could be done in a few minutes. Our studio had a big glass window looking over the, down into the studio where the uh, uh, things took place and the uh, clients would go sit upstairs and watch it. But on the monitor, it was always a little lag behind the picture downstairs or the live action downstairs. And they didn't like that, so we just covered up the glass so they couldn't see the downstairs. One of the things that we did that no other stations did, twice a year, we go to New York and film fashion shows and uh, bring it back here to edit. And uh, also we'd go to California every end of June to interview future programs that would start in the fall. And we had Danny Williams and Mary Hart interviewing these people for two solid days. In the 50s, we had no uh, warnings for tornadoes at all. And we started getting our information from Wally Canan out at Tinker Field. And we broadcast tornado warnings and FCC jumped on to us about how people would panic and be scared to death and not to do it anymore. So we put a memo on the air that said anybody who wants to continue with their tornado warnings, uh, write us a note. And we got a whole bushel basket full of uh, notes from people. We took it to uh, Washington to talk to the FCC and convinced them that they were popular. Until that time, nobody dared to broadcast it. Working for uh, WKY TV, was a heck of a lot of fun. Everything you did was brand new. Nobody had ever tried it before. And it was real exciting. We had our great people to work with, a great crew. And uh, it just couldn't have been better.